right projects. We know that IT is a remarkably difficult thing to get effect working effectively. What we're needing to think about is should we be managing risks? How do we understand risk? Are we capable actually of understanding risk properly to be able to use that to actually drive our project uh, management systems? Because if you go back to ISO 27002, pillar one, if you remember, was risk management, risk assessment and risk management. So you knew which bits were critical to your company. And we'll have to think about how we perceive risk and then how that affects our ability to measure risk effectively. So we can do our red, amber, green type of project management that many people use um, as a very simple three-level monitor. Can we even do that effectively? Well, we had a little discussion about last week and um, sort of uh, about IT as being um, kind of neutral nowadays. We'll have a little think a, a bit later on about new and emerging technologies because that's kind of critical for the topic. But I want first of all to look at the what do we think about? What are the fu fundamental concepts or frameworks relevant to risk management and so on and perceptions and measurement? Now, it won't be next week, it'll be three weeks from now, but just as a warning, in about on the week of 29th uh, I will expect to see everybody. I'll put the schedule out for you on uh, Blackboard so you know when to attend. Um, you'll have something like, actually not five minutes, but you'll have ten minutes. And that will give you a chance to get all the feedback you need, because that will be week 11. So you should have got pretty near the end of it by then. So it should be a pretty good final draft uh, that you'll post up onto, uh, uh, onto Turnitin and then I'll be able to annotate it with all the uh, feedback and advice that you need to have over Christmas to be able to submit it on about the 2nd or so of January and then come and see me that week uh, and get the full feedback. Is this the week, the 29th of November? Yeah, okay. that's for looking forward to a few weeks. Because sometimes I've done it in week 8. I'm now I'm tending to move it much later now that I use the exam week for that. <coughs> it allows you for that bit extra time. You'll have four weeks to redo it, uh, or to, to revamp it and improve it after you've had the feedback. So I mean, it's, what we've discovered over the last few few years is that if we can give you feedback before you submit, rather than after you submit it, it's kind of much more useful. If I give you the, all the feedback with your final version, it's kind of yeah. And how do I use that in feedback? So this is what we're doing is, or what I'm doing, is making sure you've got a full four weeks to incorporate all the feedback so that you then get a much better uh, grade in January. Now, this is quite interesting. As like I said, 27,002, pillar one, is fundamentally to do with risk assessment. What are the critical risks to your organisation that you can then go and look into the rest of 27,002 to find the critical questions? Because it's those critical questions which allow 27,002 to be scaled to an organisation of any size, from a single person, consultancy or whatever, right up to hundreds of thousands of staff, like say IBM, or the health service, National Health Service. And Bruce Schneier has some rather, in, you've all come across Bruce Schneier, I guess, by now. I've mentioned him several times. And he has a whole range of stories and publications that he's done over the last 10 years or more, which show that we as humans are not terribly good at understanding risk. All right, as an example, if you think about Oh, did anybody see about three or four weeks ago the problem that someone came up with with the non-steroidal 
uh, anti-inflammatory drugs. So they increase, they double your risk of having a heart problem. Yeah. So what they were saying was, I mean, there are things like ibuprofen, um, diclofenac, uh, paracetamol, proxin, a whole, a whole range are all about like this, so-called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, and painkillers as well. And someone has done some work and said, oh, it doubles your risk of having to go into hospital with a, a heart problem. Yes. And then you sort of backtrack a little bit or delve a little bit deeper, and it's doubling your risk from, or less, not quite doubling it, from 0.31% risk of having an effect to, in fact, it was, it could be up to about 0.4 or 5. Um, you know, at 0.5% chance, is it going to happen to me? 1 in 200. And we say, typically will say, 1 in 200? Not going to affect me. I have to be unbelievably unlucky. However, if we, how many you uh, have ever bought a national lottery ticket? Anybody? A few? One or two? You know, there, the, the probability of success is one in a million or two to get a, the big prize. One in lots of millions. So, and we will often do that because it's a very low cost, it's a quid. And we might be lucky. So we will actually do that. And, and so, but it also depends how you couch it. Doubling the risk, oh, that sounds terrible. But from 0.3 to 0.4 or 0.5, do I care? And if that drug actually solves my problem, you know, my backache or my whatever it is, reliably every time, it's got a probability of success of 100% and an adverse risk of point tiny. Well, and we're very, very asymmetrical, so we'll play the odds uh, that we might get even a two pound payback off the National Lottery, where the odds are really quite not too bad. We're very, very different, bad at it. Um, we often will play the odds if it's going to cost us something to avoid a problem. So if you think about your um, chief security officer, recommends to the board a significant package of expenditure to improve the resilience of the network, to increase the hardness of the firewall, and it's going to cost a million quid. And the risk, and they then ask the question, okay, so it's going to cost us a million or five million, whatever, and when did we last get a significant incident from a network topology failure uh, about three or four years ago. You've probably been there. Why do we want to spend five million to change a network topology just to make it safer in case something breaks, a switch breaks? Because we never had a failure. Or to harden the firewall, and you're a small company, it's going to cost you the equivalent of two, and you've got 20 people in the company, it's going to cost you the equivalent of 10 people's salary for a year to put a harder uh, firewall around it. Again, what's the odds? Well, it's now 50 to 65% likelihood that you'll get a, a hack. At which point it becomes getting more difficult. So we are very, very diff have very, very odd approaches to risk and reward, or risk and benefit, uh, risk of bad things and probability of good things happening. We, we're not good at it, and Schneier has some really very good articles on that website uh, from a few years ago, and most of the time actually, uh, about this curious asymmetry that makes it very difficult for humans to do risk assessment effectively. And then there's an interesting book by Hubbard about, about this as well, which is in the bibliography at the end. So have a look at these three items. These are three critical item, uh, articles by Bruce Schneier, which will help you to understand how we react to risk. Now, I want you to look at those in a few minutes and then start thinking very clearly about 
the following couple of questions. What do those three Schneier papers tell us about the way that we can do risk assessment? And what do they tell us about how we can use that for proper risk management? So that we can mitigate the risks for our projects. And then follow up, as is the usual way of doing literature research, follow up some of the sources referenced in the second of the paper, the num paper number 155 as it's called. And then see, as you build that, again, building your work in bibliography about this risk assessment, risk management for uh, corporate and uh, IT governance, what do these all tell us about our chances of being able to do effective risk management? <coughs> so, the book by Hubbard is called The Failure of Risk Management and Why It's Broken and How to Fix It. And that, I believe, was or is still in the library. And there's another one that's also quite useful by Chapman and Ward that's mentioned here. And this is talking about something called uncertainty management. Now, some people will argue that risk and uncertainty might be equivalent. Again, you need to think about this because this leads into the idea of how do we make a whole company more sustainable in the long term through more effective governance? Are we looking at risks? Are we looking at uncertainty? What are we really looking at that makes us, helps us to plan a little bit better for that future that keeps our company safe? Some of it's dead obvious, some of it is much less so. So that's what I want to do today. And then what we'll have a look at is how, how that's going to fit together into that risk, into the um, workshop later on this week. So I want to make the connection between um, the frameworks and the questions you're unearthing today as to how you put those into your uh, assignment in, uh, over, the, over the next week. So let's have a little look at what you'll be doing. Um, you can do this a bit later on today and then we'll do it also on uh, Thursday. As always, we're talking about critical evaluation. We're looking at these things from Hubbard and, and the other book and from Schneier about risk assessment and management, but in this context of sustainable information corporate governance. Now, the, one of the critical things that's happening these days is the rate of change of the technology. And I was at, as you know, I was over in um, the IBM World of Watson conference last week. And in two years since Watson popped out of the woodwork, it's absolutely astounding how much has changed, how many companies are rapidly moving into the field of cognitive computing, how they're developing into this sort of cognitive overlay of statistics called Watson Analytics. There was a demonstration, a very short demonstration, on Wednesday morning at the big keynote uh, address that the chairman and CEO of IBM was co coordinating. They've now got Watson Cognitive capable of being, to some extent, creative. It can it was able, and the guy was there who had actually used it to create, with assistance from Watson, what is now the number one vi uh, video uh, song on YouTube. So not only are they doing analysis, not only can they play Jeopardy brilliantly and win against the best humans, not only can people play against, uh, can computers win with chess and go, they're developing it to help people on uh, help desks give the right or best advice to the people on the end of the phone, call centres are using it, people are using it to make smarter decisions, 
so they think. The stuff is changing at an amazing rate. And you are thinking about big data and how that could be used to do things. Particularly given that 80% of the data is kind of uncertain. So we need to think of the risks. One, if you remember the story about Target, the company Target a few years ago, who were able to predict from the spe changing spending patterns which women and customers were pregnant and when they were going to deliver their baby roughly. And then they used that in, sort of injudiciously and had a huge hit to their reputation. We know that companies <coughs> don't keep up to date <coughs> with security issues. Last year, we're not quite sure yet how many, or, or this year, how many sets of ID were stolen. Probably a billion last year, probably similar this year, maybe growing. $200 per set of ID. So a billion sets of ID stolen equals a, an economic cost of something like $200 billion, which is quite non-trivial. So security is a big problem, risk and reputation is another pr problem, or just the fact that the IT doesn't work terribly well often is another critical problem. So there's lots of risks that we need to be thinking about. So look, using those Schneier articles and lots of others that you find as you follow the uh, tree of references, and also, by the way, find more recent Bruce Schneier articles as well, so you can get another more recent set of uh, references as well to, to absorb. Doing all of that, this is the fundamental. How does all of this stuff that you're reading about from Bruce Schneier and others, what insights can we get? What guidance can we get? How, and link it to 27002, by the way. What sort of strategies do we need to develop and how do we develop them to really think about the problems, the risks, the opportunities of implementing <coughs> new services? Because as we develop new services, we are almost inevitably going to open ourselves up to risks that we haven't yet encountered. And we need to think about those. And they're not necessarily the obvious ones, the obvious consequences. We need to think of the consequences of the first order consequences. And maybe delve a little bit further back to the second order consequences of the consequences of the consequences. Otherwise, we trip over those um, unintended consequences which are everywhere because people are too lazy, often, to think through what the consequences are. And I'm sure some of you have seen this while you're out in your placement year where people hadn't really thought things through properly. So that's really what we're doing. You need to be doing over the next, or well, rest of today and then the same time on Thursday when we have another session. Okay, folks, any questions once I switch this off? <laughs>